Okay, so I've gotten a ton of requests on how to defend the gun bunch strong. We're going to be taking a look at these four plays that a lot of players tend to spam. And if they can audible into these or flip their play and quick snap, it gives most players online a lot of trouble. So let's start off with our formation on the defensive side of the ball. We are going to be in the big nickel over G. Now let's start off with AP setup on the defensive side of the ball, starting with our linebackers. I am a huge fan of Lurk Artist on both linebackers, but also working the mid zone KO into the equation. The reason for this is that when your opponent is running a lot of these concepts, they like to check the ball down in the middle of the field. If these linebackers are able to hit the running back, that'll cause a drop, or if it plays a drag or a route over the middle, that's gonna allow you to force knockouts. A lot of players are looking for those perimeter throws, checking it down into the flats or in the short middle of the field, you want knockouts. Now let's talk about our safeties. Our safeties are gonna require two abilities minimum. These are gonna be your knockouts with the deep zone knockout and also the mid zone knockout. The reason for this is that in this particular defense, we'll sometimes be playing a deep outside third or an inside quarter, or sometimes we're playing match altogether, depending on how our opponents are running their offense. And we want to have the ability to knock out not only throws to the sidelines, but also over the middle. You're gonna notice a theme in that mid zone KO is probably the most important ability that we are gonna be rocking on all of our players in general. Which brings us to our three corners. We have our outside corners, I like to utilize the Genki Force items, especially the Jire Alexander. He gets the universal coverage. You only have to wait three plays for this to work. If you guys are in a setting that is just head-to-head -head seasons and you guys can afford this or want to use this, this would be highly recommended as universal coverage is every single ability in the game. It's flat zone, mid zone, deep zone, knockouts. It's truly wonderful. So I like the universal in this spot and I also like it over here at this spot. So our slot corner is gonna be able to get the universal coverage as well. I use the Genki Force Bayard, and that's gonna allow him to play hook zones to get mid zone KOs, flat zones to get flat zone KOs. I can even man him up within this particular defense and the universal coverage also contains man knockouts such as short, medium, and deep route knockout. And he also has the ability to get deep zone KOs if I were to put him in an outside third, which we'll get to some of our setups here in a moment. Now with all those AP savings that we're talking about with the glowing X factors, we do have one player that we are going to load up on and that is our other corner. It in which I actually pay for not only deep zone and mid zone, but I also rock the flat zone KO. This is gonna help with stopping RPOs, check downs on short downs, such as third and one or fourth and short. And you're gonna be able to get a lot of game changing turnovers with that flat zone KO. So between all three underneath corners, we basically have every KO possible. And then our up top safeties have deep zone and mid zone because that's really where they're gonna be hanging out. 99% of the time. On the defensive line, I am a big fan of having Lurk Artist on both of my edges. I do not use true pass rushing edge players. I actually use more so coverage outside linebackers that get Lurk Artist for free. I also try to prioritize the zone coverage rating. So you see right here, I've got the comp pass Zaven Collins at this particular position. I've got him rocking with the Lurk Artist and also with his edge threat elite, which honestly never triggers due to the secure protectors in the game. But I also do have an AP point that I am spending on him to give him mid zone KO because if I were to drop him into a hook or three wreck and I want him, you know, knocking out drag routes in the middle of the field or Texas routes to the running back or quick throws to the flat, I've got the ability to animate. Now on the other side, I've got another lurk artist player. So I got this coverage bow Jackson. He's quite good. And then in terms of the interior, I just rock whoever I want. You're going to want good pass rushing defensive tackles. I run minister of defense, a AKA card still truly elite, I promise you. And then I'm running team of the year, Aaron Donald, but it's totally up to you what you wanna do at D-Tackle. If you want run stuffers, feel free to put them here at that position. So that does it for our AP setup. Now, if you guys are enjoying this video so far, make sure you guys do me a solid, hit that subscribe button. We're pushing up towards 32,000 subscribers here on the channel. We've hit a little bit of a surge here in the spring months. I really appreciate that. That's why I'm doing this video here for you guys against the most popular offensive meta. If you guys are fiending for a little bit more, this is actually a morsel of my Kansas City Chiefs defensive game plan, which you guys can find over on Gridiron Game Plans. I'm not going to harp on it too much because I talk about it in most videos. You guys unlock everything on the website for $9.95. I will leave you guys with this idea. If you guys like this video, I've got videos specifically for bunch, trips tied in, tight formations, under center formations that break down my approach for those formation looks out of this same defense we're breaking down here. So if you guys like this, you'll definitely check out that Kansas City Chiefs defense. Again, $9.95 for the entire website. If this video gets 250 likes, I will do a breakdown for how I defend trips tight end 
just like this. Let's see if you guys can do it. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the two plays I'm gonna show you guys to run in this particular breakdown. We're gonna be talking about the cover two out of the big nickel over G, and we're gonna be talking about the cover six. Now with this particular breakdown, what we're gonna do from our coach settings perspective is we are gonna leave match coverage on, and we are going to set flats to 30 and curl flats to five. This is gonna allow me to have a traditional Mabel profile that I can pull out at any point in time. This is gonna allow me to just spot drop everybody to areas on the field based off of my opponent's tells on the fly but i also reserve the ability to reset my play at any time and run true match granted this is a four strong offense but you'll see why i want to run some match stuff here in just a second i promise that's going to make sense now in terms of option defense with this having an rpo alert in it you will want to make sure that you set your option focus to the quarterback this is not one where the quarterback can pull and run but there are other ones across the game where they can you guys will be just best off running this setting in the event that you're facing you know a different playbook that has maybe the gun bunch strong x nasty where the quarterback can't keep and haul with it in terms of your auto alignment we are going to do a couple of different things here okay we're going to run base align to start and auto flip on we'll get into the man align settings here momentarily now when it comes to cover two we'll start off with the rpo because most players will run this into the ground if you let them what we're going to do is we're actually going to reset our zone drops right off rip what this is going to do is it's going to walk those cloud flats down instead of playing 30. From there, we're going to set up a coverage call that looks like this. We are going to actually rotate a cover three shell with cloud coverage on the bunch strong side. Now, the cool thing about this is that this will press the ever living bejesus out of this left solo receiver with this third. This player right here is going to close center field from the backside, and this player is going to rotate out over the top to defend a corner route. Keeping in mind that we have appropriate knockouts at all the spots that I've broken down, this is a great starter shell that you guys can use. If your opponent is spamming the RPO flat, Make sure that you change your coverage on the outside to a hard flat. You can either individually do this or you can change your coverage down universally. Keep in mind that if you change your coverage down universally, you are gonna lose some match rules that I'm gonna break down here momentarily. But when you guys are facing the RPO, you will basically notice that if they go to throw this out to the flat, boom, you've got your flat zone KO in the hard flat that's going to be there jumping this quite easily. Again, the premise of this tip is that you want to have a baseline impressed hard flat because they will not block this player. This will allow you to break up these RPOs and make them run the ball. Now, if they're running the ball on you out of this, I'm going to show you the gap shoot. If you take your user right here, we're going to stay on Chuck Howley and you stand right here. You guys will actually note that if you are facing this play, you can actually fly in through this gap and make a hit. If they have a glowing running back, such as Bo Jackson, make sure you have a secure tackler on your user. I've gone ahead and put in my Bo Jackson at this spot. This is my break glass in case of emergency player, which I'll take him off the defensive edge and put him here so I can utilize that free ability. Now, when we actually do this, we'll be able to take him down without an auto broken tackle. This is really easy stuff. This allows you to neutralize the RPO screen and also gap shoot the run at the same time. Now let's get into everybody's favorite play, which is called Durham. The setup for Durham is gonna be one in which your opponent streaks the running back, posts the point man, and drags the tight end. Now, going back to our initial setup, reminder that when you break the huddle, your zone drops are on. We are going to reset the play to turn our zone drops off. And remember our underlying coach suggestion was to play match. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna activate match rules on our vertical hook players. We are still going to set up our coverage shell like you see right here, but what we are going to do, and this is very important, is we are going to get rid of the mid read zone. When you call a cover two play that you want matching principles on, you have to get rid of the mid read zone to get your vertical hooks to match. This is gonna be great because what this will do is this will allow us to kind of take away the running back streak out of the backfield. And then we can actually sit underneath on this drag combo. So you see right here, when we run this, I can kind of hang out here. You see how the vertical hook on the right took the running back and the vertical hook on the other side took the drag. So again, here's our top down look. Look at how the right vertical hook takes the running back out of the backfield. I can play the post. The vertical hook here on the left matches the drag all the way to the flat, which is really important to remember because if you recall, we're playing press, not a cloud flat zone on the top outside of the screen here. So you see the press animation on the streak, which is designed to be a pull route. So if I 
just stay underneath this post route and they go to throw it. Now, all of a sudden, this player that was playing press on 88 can peel back with his KO ability and intercept this ball. Meanwhile, you take a look here, your flat wheel is covered, your streak out of the backfield is covered. Let's go ahead and move on to our next setup out of the bunch, which is going to be our double corner. Now, the play that they're going to call is corner strike. They are going to put the point on a corner, the inside tight end on a streak, and they're going to drag the backside solo receiver. Again, if you were to take a look at our base coverage for this, we are resetting the play and pressing and rotating our coverage over the top. Now, with this particular breakdown, it is important to remember that if they do decide to run this in route out of the backfield to the running back, that he might be open underneath. You see right here that this is kind of the one that you have to be careful with because you do not have a flat in this regard. This will not play the match on this play that it did in Durham because it's a different route dispersion. So if you're ever in a situation where you want to make adjustments and not have to worry about that running back, one of the things that I will do is I will take this defensive end, keep in mind that I do like my KO ability on this spot and I will put him into a hard flat. This will kind of close down that backside little flat area where I don't really want to be and it allows me to stay in this shell. Again, keeping in mind that if you want vertical hook matching principles, you have to blitz your user. Make sure you step closer to the line so you get your three or your two, in this case, green bars of your head. This tells the game that he is a pass rusher and allows the other three guys to shed while you actually peel back in coverage. Now, as it pertains this play corner strike, if you guys are paying attention to the way this works here, this is a double corner setup. What's really awesome about our pressed corner that we have to have to stop the RPO is that if he's in a cloud flat, you're going to be able to defend the shorter corner, which is the one they always throw to Megatron. Meanwhile, we have an outside third over the top that's going to be able to take away the deeper corner. And then we have a backside player closing center field that can take away the tight end on the streak. So as it pertains defending this, if you're just kind of running it like so, you're going to notice that you really can't throw this and you're going to be able to be shed in the same covered shell essentially locks down both Durham and the corner strike double corner again here's your top down look at the way this coverage plays if the running back runs the end route over the middle he's not really getting much here if they want to throw the drag the user's kind of in the area and then the double corners are both guarded with the seam taken away as well. A lot of players run this double corner. They chuck that seam to the tight end. That's not going to be there here in this play. Now let's go ahead and talk about the play Dagger. Dagger is notorious for being one of the tougher to stop plays out of this formation. And the reason for it is this darn crossing route. Now keep in mind that we play this press outside third on the left. This is the key with this particular call. So if I show you the same shell from the previous set up what we're going to do here is i'm going to want you to watch michael irvin here on the far left in this super press animation for the purpose of this particular breakdown i'm actually going to spy my pass rush so that way it doesn't shed but i want you to kind of watch how this crossing route drag route little return route by the tight end combo can be defended and i don't have to worry about the crosser so you see right here i can kind of just play the drag and then go back to here and if they want to throw that ball up on the crossing route that outside third that was playing the press on the solo receiver is so close to that that he's going to be able to break this up so you see right here we're getting the jam animation it deters him from pulling you see right here at this point the crossing route is actually further downfield than the pull route which makes it very very tough to throw this ball you also factor in here on this play that we actually have a matching rule. If you notice here, we have this player, Kevin Byard. If we kind of rewind this here, you notice how with this play, when it snapped, he kind of drops in the vertical hook. And then due to the matching principles that we created, he's actually going to run with this. Now, it's okay that he's behind this by a couple steps. In fact, we kind of want to bait them into thinking, oh, that beat man to man. Let's chuck this. Because again, this outside third, Jai Alexander is going to be able to play it. The cool thing also is that they can't just necessarily throw the ball hot over the middle because if they were to throw it super hot, you've got a middle third. If they were to kind of throw it as an inside pass lead, Bayard will be able to make a play on it. But otherwise, this is really, really well guarded. Now, the only thing that really is a threat is the tight end over the middle. You see that he kind of releases off the line and then he's going to break over the middle. My user with the red circle is actually responsible here. You take a look at the flat, it's bracketed. Up top is bracketed. Everywhere on this particular play is bracketed and you don't really have to do too darn much. So that is our cover two setup that you guys can use to completely shut down this particular play. One thing that I do like to do is set all the plays that I will ever break the huddle in in my audible. So I like quarters, I like cover six, I like my cover nine and I like my cover two. 
So keeping in mind here that I have zone drops on and match on, I want to show you something cool. And I've talked about this before. So if you guys watch every video, you know this already. You see right here with those cloud flats, they're backed up further. This is the visual cue that zone drops are on. As I talked about, if you reset the play, which is left trigger, it will pull the zone drops off. You see the cloud flats kind of suck back up. Now, the thing is, I can't just go ahead and reset the play again to make them go back. They're going to stay all up in their regular default alignment. This is why we leave the play that we broke the huddle in in our audibles. You see right here, I have cover two in the audibles. Most players would tell you, you do not want the play you broke the huddle in in your audibles. It's a waste of a slot. You want as many plays as possible, but not in this context, because let's say my opponent flips or they decide to audible into something else and I want those zone drops on. If you re audible into the play fresh, it actually takes your zone drops back into account. And this actually applies to any play that you audible into. So if I were to audible into say cover nine here, you see how my zone drops are on on that cloud flat. So the only play that you can actually turn your zone drops off is the play that you break the huddle in. So I want the ability to break the huddle, turn them off if I want to, but also turn them back on by audibling back into that play. So say I was basing out of this cover nine play, I would have the power to break huddle and cover nine, reset it to turn it off and then re-audible into it to turn it back on. If you ever switch play, say from cover two to cover nine, you will just be playing with your zone drops on, which is why I wanna break down one more coverage setup for you that is a very, very good setup for this. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to set up a little cover six action. So cover six is really good in that we have kind of the cover two to the backside, but we got a cover four shell to the front side and with this cover two shell to the left side that's totally fine the cover four we have some options though if i want to i can go ahead and press i've got the five yard purple i've got the ko outside quarter zone which isn't going to be matching at all the ko i've got the ko inside quarter zone which isn't going to be matching at all this is totally fine in a lot of cases i'll go ahead and put this player into a curl flat to the short side because what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to play Mabel in the event that they do decide to run the dagger play with the crossing route and the drag so if you get this you've got the ability to have a Mabel cover six but if they decide that they want to run say for instance the double corner from corner strike we actually have quite a good setup for this as well because what actually ends up occurring is that we can basically Mabel so we could do something like this on this side, kind of a double Mabel cover two with two hooks in the middle of the field. But what this does is it gives you the ability to kind of drop down the seam. And if they want to throw this shorter corner, they're going to be throwing it straight into a zone drop blue, which we've already had set to 30. This is the benefit of the slower dropping zone drop blue is that, yeah, while they don't get back to a deep corner route, they do a really good job on the, the shorter corner route. So you see right here, the short one that they always throw into the sideline, they're going to throw it right into this. Now, in terms of the deeper corner on this play, if you guys want to get kind of crazy with it, feel free to modify this cover six shell. If you want to go ahead and reset it and then roll a cover three setup over the top like this. This gives you Mabel to the right with our cover three cloud rotation. And then you could go ahead and just play something like this on the backside, which will allow you to, again, defend the bubble screen. It'll allow you to defend double corner. It will allow you to defend pretty much anything out of this with the one exception maybe being sometimes your opponent will be able to throw the dagger crosser. Again, it's tough to live on though. If I snap this ball and I want to throw this crossing route, you're going to see here that when I go to throw that, that guy has a KO ability and he can get back to this. So a lot of players will kind of rely on throwing that route as a, you know, a backbreaker, not today. So that's it for today's video, guys. If you guys like this comprehensive style breakdown of this bunch strong offense, make sure you guys check out Gridiron, man. This is the stuff I do all day, every day over there on that website. I know I do a lot of tips here on the YouTube channel, but this depth that I provided, the one solve cure-alls for certain set, uh, defensive formations and offensive formations. This is going to be really key to advancing as a Madden player. And I've got so much over there. Check out the Chiefs game plan, the Big Nickel Over G revamped. I've got shells just like this for bunch, strips tied in, tight, all of that. And again, if you guys want more content just like this for other breakdowns, make sure you guys hit that like goal. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, this is Ann. Get in the lab and good luck.